Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon. If we could get 500, 400, I don't even know. If you're just enjoying the series, do smash a like on the video. That is always appreciated. Uh, that would be fantastic. So, let's get into things, basically. Um, there's not really much more I can say. I said I wanted to pick up some points from those matches, and I feel like we've done that. And I feel like we've played well throughout. But we do have some other stuff to talk about, which I feel is very important. So enjoy the highlights of the games we've played this month, and I will join you guys in a sec for the Swansea game. Oh, guys, careful. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Plenty of players over. Lucas Silva is one of them, and Middles will score with their first chance of the game. Typical, really. We've had some really good opportunities so far, and now we are trailing. Oh, God. Out wide for Fabio. Goes for golf, scores. 1 1 equalizer from Fabio, ninth of the season. That's more like it, but we really do need to turn this into a win. I can't believe we were even losing it in the first place. Looks out wide for Everton. He's got a man out wide. Can he just overlap and get across on himself? He does. Ball back across. Chan. Oh, Kano at the back post there. Wimbledon 2, middle for 1. We've turned it around. Fernando Carlo with the goal. Good contribution. Well, there we go. Wimbledon 2, Middlesbrough 1. I mean, oh, oh, for the love of God. It's just like the Middlesbrough game. We do brilliantly, and then that happens, and they score with the first shot on target. It's a little bit annoying, really. But there you go. 1-0 Palace. Kabai steps up, and it's 2-0 the Palace. Sometimes it just is not your day. And today is one of those days, folks. Win that. Uh-oh. Please don't make this 3-0. Ah. <sighs> I have actually no idea how we've lost this game by three goals to nil. Like, sometimes it's just, you have to hold your hands up and go, nothing we did makes any difference. Does somebody get a ball in now? Go on, whip a good cross, get Fabio on the end of it. Marley's in there and we finally got a goal back. I, I genuinely cannot believe we're 3-1 down in this match, to be honest. Carlo's in and it's 3-2. Amazingly, we've got another one back. But where was this earlier in the game, frankly, guys? There we go, Crystal Palace 3, Wimbledon 2. Grabs the last free kick. All the way across, Planich at the back post, Planich at the back post again, and it is 1 0 to Wimbledon. Nana Planich is his third goal of the season already. Great return, free kick. Planich's header. Gomez this time with the header. Two goals from corners in two minutes. Wimbledon two, Watford nil, Planich with a goal and an assist now. Great tackle. Lovric, Vilhena. That's annoying. That's all come from my defender refusing to try and win a header against Troy Deeney when he's set to tight mark him. Very frustrating there to concede that goal. There we go, Wimbledon 2, Watford 1, another good win. Right guys, oh, we're back and we're going to jump straight in with the question of the day before I talk about anything. You guys can have a little look at the league table and obviously you can see how we've been doing in that time period. But today's question is this, and I like this one. If you could have a sit down meal with any footballer from living or dead, past or present type of thing, then who would it be and why? Now for me, I would genuinely, and this kind of is more topical just because unfortunately he sadly passed away recently. Jimmy Hill did a lot for football. Uh, so many things from both being a player and some of his act, um, activist work, his chairman worked so much good that he did and i would just i just think how many good stories would he have to tell uh, and also zlatan because who wouldn't want to have dinner with zlatan because it's zlatan so yeah there you go what do you guys think and if you do have any ideas for a question today of course drop those in the comments too with the hashtag qotd now we are currently sitting third in the league we've got 28 points from 13 matches this season i'm thinking top half is comfortably doable now we're 13 points above uh Stoke and Palace who are in there though Palace did beat us um a little bit harshly I feel like we got two goals late on just because we were throwing everything at them but we really should have been able to break them down before that it's just one of those ones where you just the chances we would like we'd hit the post or we'd get the shot saved when they wouldn't it's just one of those things sometimes that just happens you know uh, yeah you can analyze that to your blue in the face but sometimes you're just not going to win you can even if you analyze a game perfectly sometimes not that I'm saying I did because I don't pretend that I'm any good at this game I really hope you don't think that I think that I am um Sometimes you just still won't win. In the same way that sometimes you'll win if you're appalling and you do the wrong thing. Sometimes it still works, you know. It's just how it is sometimes. That's football, isn't it, really? Um, but yeah, so we're doing relatively well. Take a quick gander at the squad. Top goal scorer at the moment is, of course, Fabio with nine goals in 14. Still a decent amount. You know, still far more than one in two, which is good. Uh, I'd like to see a few more from him, maybe, though. But he's still doing a decent job so far. Last five games, Everton. The man! 8.1. Aaron Cresswell up there as well with a dead-on eight, which is lovely to see. And cleverly, he's done all right off the bench. I have to say, he's got a 7.8, having only played six matches off the bench so i'm fairly pleased with that it's interesting to see that fernando cano actually is doing okay as well now i feel like he never has a bad game he only ever has average games and all right games he never does he never gets the eights and that but he'll do decent 6.8 and above and for me that's a relatively solid performer now importantness and i'm going to obviously go on to the next part of this um while we talk about the important thing and the important thing is this uh, firstly i have a new assistant manager people were talking about staff and i did have a little look and it turns out we were actually um oh come on I thought we were on the match day. I assumed we were on the match day. Um, I've literally talked to this back in a sec. Right, we were on the match day, but for some reason there was a load of extra news items. Shane, that's the third time already that he's come to me. Bear in mind, he is not set. 
He's a backup player. Oh, uh, that thing really does bug. I understand that players that are backups or whatever will want to play football at some point. They'll want to further their career. But it's the fa why bother having squad statuses at all then? If they're not going to be able to accept, if players won't accept their squad statuses that you give them when you fucking sign them, it just feels so. That mechanic has never really sat right with me. Because um, otherwise, why does it need to exist? Right, we're going to do this tactic, of course. Because uh, apparently they're weak against it anyway, and we're away. So that makes perfect sense. So we're going to go with Fabio, Carlo, Duarte, who's had a little rest for the Watford game. Um, Everton, Ramsalar, Farmer, Cresswell, Gomez, Planich, and Manquillo. Uh, I, I rested a couple of players for the Watford game, basically. I put Masek in instead, because I really do want to get him some game time. It's just that Ramsalar is such a good player. It's so difficult. Uh, but Roman, Ma I don't want to lose him, because it's something I really like about him. Planich had an absolute blinder against Watford, scored a goal and assisted on the other, and we could have had more. But there you go. So we'll do, I'm, I'm happy with the setup for this one. I still feel that Swansea are going to beat us because there's something about Swansea. I've yet to figure out what it is that they do that we're so good at, um, or rather we're so bad at defending. We're the favourites, apparently, though, because Swansea are not having the best year so far. I feel we'll fall away. So I expect there's already been comments like, oh, you're going to get Champions League this year. We're not. It, we're just not. And that's not because I feel like we shouldn't be. Well, we shouldn't be, really, because it's only our third year in the Premier League. I just mean that... We have these good starts because we've got decent players. But again, I think the squad depth will be better this year. So when we inevitably drop off a little bit, it will be a lot w less worse than it was last year. That is for sure. Uh, I am going to go on control because we're a better side than them. So we'll start with that. Um, yeah, so we've got a new assistant manager. We've got Steve Round in, basically. And I feel like he's done good stuff for as well. Firstly, his opposition instructions, when I ask him for them, are a lot better than Neil Cox's were, uh, which is one thing which I really do need, frankly, because sometimes I don't always pick the best ones to start the games for obvious reasons, because it's quite difficult to set them up. Um, better once we actually get into the match, but it means that from the start of matches, we generally have the right players marked up. That, that's the way I've noticed it just in the few matches over this month that we've uh, had him in charge of that sort of situation. Fabio's broken the back line. I've got some new PPMs on certain players, uh, or I'm training Fabio for a new one. Hello. Ramsalar? Oh, what a save that is from Ariola. Nipples in goal there. Makes an absolutely wonderful st st stop. Cresswell to the edge of the box for Everton now, who seems to be occupying that position more and more. Duarte blocks. Good stuff from us in the opening stages, though. We're working those set pieces lovely. Um, next thing I wanted to quickly say... The board came to me and they said that we'd like to give you some more transfer funds. And I said, yes, please, that would be delightful. How much would you like to give me? And they said 26 million. And I said, thank you. I'm going to get away before you change your mind. So, yeah, we've got 26 million pounds in the bank again, uh, which I can probably use in January. Right. OK, this Steve is saying, and I trust Steve. Trust you, Steve. We're going to go for mixed passing now, uh, just for a little while. We've created three half chances, which means that actually every chance we've had shot wise so far has actually been a half chance, which, OK, yes, I'd like them to be clear cut. But I mean, it's. It's not even funny how much we favour that wing. We may as well just start using that from the, the off now. I just feel like I don't like to use it from the start, just in case uh, Carno has a good game and they don't target him or something. You know what I mean? Swansea have not even had a shot yet. Duarte, up for Fabio. I feel like this is our chance to finally beat Swansea. And if we don't do it, I'll be annoyed. Um, then again, I want to see how we play over the full match before I can really decide that. You know, they might come at us completely now. Carno. Duarte through for Fabio is never going to score from that angle, and he's offside. But yeah, 26 million in the bank, which is amazing. Um, so I'm going to go out and try and look for maybe another left-sided player, um, because I'm not entirely sure if I... I want an Everton on both wings, basically. That would be my dream team, is to have Everton on either side, Carno through the middle, and then obviously... Oh, hello. Um, not Carno through the middle. Duarte through the middle, and then Fabio up top. That's my dream sort of front four. Everton turns, strikes it, and this time Nipples can't keep it out, and it is 1-0 to, Everton, uh, 1 to Everton. It kind of is in a way, but we are back in front here, uh, and back up to second in the league. Yes, our goal difference is worse than some of the other teams around us, but still, it really doesn't bother me, because to me, 31 points. At this point now, after 14 matches, if we were to win here, we'd only be six points away from our tally from last season, with 24 matches left to play. Everton, lovely first touch. Bang! And, well, he's flapped a hand at it, but it doesn't matter. Swansea have not been good in this first half. We've created some good chances, but I could do with creating slightly better chances. I want to turn some of those chances into... Sorry, my camera thing just buggered up. Hope that doesn't turn the face cam off. It doesn't usually, but, you know. Uh, wasn't the worst. Well, we're winning 1-0. Calm down, Steve. Neil was always over the top um, nice to them. Maybe Steve Rounds is a bit of a hard ass. Um, so, Fabio's not had the best game so far. It has to be said. He's not done the best. Just one of those things, I guess. Um, but we can bring him on Kirky in the second half, if needs be, or Radek Marley. We've got options, that's what I would say. If you're wondering where Colin Murphy is, I loaned him out to Pompey because I just wanted to get him some game time, frankly. Um, that's interesting. That They are very much keeping the ball at the back, and I think we can make the most of that, frankly. We're just going to push in. Why, why not dig in? Uh, I feel like we're doing just fine in this second. I think we'll be fine in the second half if we just keep the controlled setting. Although, if we were to get a second goal, I'd be tempted to maybe go for counter. Or, rather, not so much if we get a second goal, but if I start to notice them coming back into it, I might slump it to counter, drop the wingers back um, to sort of just left and right mids. Oh, Swansea have got Pioni Sisto. That is a 
that is a signing and a half. The other thing I wanted to talk about um, is that I've seen a few more, a few videos sort of within the FM community about this sort of, oh uh, crap. Oh, great tackle. And that is like how I record videos, but I didn't want to do it because other people had done it. But then I realized that everybody records things in different ways. And I feel like, you know, I've watched several of them from different FM YouTubers and other YouTubers, and everyone has their own unique recording sort of methodology and process. And I wondered if you guys actually want to see how I do it, just in case you were thinking of starting a channel and wondered how I do it. So if you are interested in seeing something like that, do let me know in the comments and I'll probably try and knock one up at the end of the week for you guys, if you want, because it is a bit more complicated than perhaps some other people's. And maybe I could do it easier, but hello, Kano. Oh, Go on, have a shot. Somebody have a shot. Sammy Farmer, he's ploughing through teams right now. It's ironic that we've got a player called Farmer and we play at New Plough Lane. There's lots of farm jokes to be made and I feel like I'm not making the most of that. Carno probably should have shot a bit earlier there, but the balls have eventually ricocheted to him. A good save from Nipples, but Farmer's in on the rebound, and that is 2-0 here at the Liberty Stadium, and we are surely, we're finally going to beat Swansea, and we're going to deserve it as well, uh, to be honest. Right. Oh, okay, we'll let this highlight play out, particularly if we grab a third goal. And if we do grab a third goal, I'll make some rotation options. Oh dear, look at the space. Duarte's pulled into the channel. Get that goal for Fab. We need a goal for Fabio. Ball across. Everton knocks it down. Headed away again. Dembele. Big Jonge there, and uh, Sisto looks quite pacey. Um, would I be correct in thinking he's a pacey motherfucker? Because he looks like it. Norton, don't let them... Oh. I don't know, we've had this weird problem um, this month, and it's something I encountered a bit on FM15, was where your teams would just seem to score with the first time... The first time they hit the target, they would seem to score against you. And I guess that might be because we're... Oh, goodness me. It would be maybe because we're um, not giving them many chances to shoot, but it's still frustrating, because we're doing well defensively for the most part. But then when it comes to that, they'll get that one chance and they'll take it. And that's a frustrating thing to see. Um, as long as we get away with the win still, I'll be fine. Fabio is not played well today. He just hasn't. I'm actually going to give Kirky a little run out because he's got that pace. And Carlo, again, 6.9. He's solid. If nothing else, he is solid. Like, he, he's very unflashy. He does the job, basically, and creates goals and assists. And I'm happy with that for him so far. I might not even make that third sub, to be honest. Because, hello, go on. 3-1, that would be nice and nice and happy then. Um... I'm not really sure what that was as far as a highlight goes, but I'm assuming this is going to be the highlight. Mankio to Ramsalar. We're usually good from these situations. Ah, ball bags. Just win that. There we go, Mankio. Lovely stuff. Gomez, Duarte, lovely football. Adam Kirk, and he's scored as well. Wimbledon have a 3-1 advantage, and Adam Kirk is finally starting to see a bit more game time. And not only that, but when he plays, he's got goals in his game. Now, that's his fifth goal of the season. I don't know how many he got last year, but it certainly wasn't as many at this stage in the year. I feel like when he gets the chances, maybe a shade of offside there, he's got a bit more of a finishing instinct this year to actually put the chances away. And I think that's going to come in important for us. Perhaps not this year. He'll certainly be a sort of second choice this year. But I think next year, he will definitely be running in, given our you know, frontline to run for their money. I think, oh, come on, don't concede another one. Don't let them score with two shots on target. That would be a little bit frustrating. And Mwasa. Okay, in those situations, why doesn't the goalkeeper just take one step to his left and collect the ball? It just seems so, I don't know, I just don't like that. It Like, how close is this ball to the goalkeeper? He's literally, I mean... It's two, this game should never be 3-2 for one thing. Uh, we've been vastly the better side. Carno again. And, well, we've got another corner. Um, we've had a lot of corners today. And when we have a lot of corners, generally we do quite well. Because there we go. Swansea 2, Wimbledon 3. It's another 3-2 victory. And it's another win away from home, which is fantastic. I'm just frustrated at the goals they've scored. Um, because generally, I mean, obviously you can analyse it to you blue in the face. But I feel like it's just goals like that. Yeah, okay, he shouldn't be allowed to get the cross in. That's the defender's fault. But once that ball is in there, there's no reason why the goalkeeper shouldn't be just claiming it. You know, there's not, there is no tactic for could the goalkeeper actually claim some decent passes. Again, 10 key passes for Nelson Duarte is a lovely, lovely thing to see. And I genuinely am shocked that we've got 31 points on the board already. That was our little easier spell of fixtures coming up. And we managed to take nine points from them. And I would have been happy with nine. I figured that we'd lose one of them, maybe draw a couple of them. So frankly, I'll take nine any day of the week. Um, so we'll see what we're going to do in the next episode. As you'll see, we've got Liverpool in the Capital One Cup quarterfinal. If we do go through, however, we will get to play Everton in a two-legged semi-final. And we're at home against Liverpool. We've beaten Liverpool once this year. If we beat them, there's a potential League Cup final in this year for us. Because I think we could beat Everton. Because remember, they are a championship side. Uh, so... That, that is always a feature of this. Is this going to take ages again? Because this is going to get on my tits now. I don't know why it's doing this. After every match now, it just takes forever to process. For no apparent reason. There we go. Good lord. Um, so, next episode, guys, we're going to be doing... What are we going to be doing? Mm, when's the Burnley game? That's the 1st of January. Uh, that's not too bad, actually. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that's that's five matches in the next episode. So we're going to get a bit of a, an action-packed Christmas schedule with Liverpool, Arsenal, which are tough ones, Villa away. Hopefully we can do something there. Then we've got Fulham at home and then Manchester City so 
I'd like to see if we could get a win, maybe, yeah, a win against Fulham at home and maybe see if we can get some... I feel like this is the point where we drop down to a sort of comfortable mid-table point, but that's fine. If we get any other points from the other games, I'm golden with that, basically. There's a lot more green on the board, and I'm always happy to see that. So, guys, if you've enjoyed this episode, please do drop a like on the video. That'd be magnificent. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in your inbox every single day at 7 o'clock. And I'll join you guys in the next episode for a game against Burnley. That should be a reasonably comfortable win for us. And that brings us onto a lovely little run of fixtures, which hopefully we can get some more points. I'm really looking forward to the way this season is going. Maybe even, maybe top seven. Who knows? I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.